Oh my gosh. This thing's popping. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We've got ourselves a nasty post frontal day. Uh, I literally just got the boat back. I was filming some Guggen Squad videos this, this last week. Uh, trolling motor cable snapped. And I just got it back. I was excited to go fishing. Weather was warming up and boom! We just had this these nasty, it was a hailstorm last night. Temperatures have dropped like 40 degrees. You know, what are you gonna do? Texas spring. In today's video, I want to show you what I've been working on as far as making bows and arrows for going hunting in the fall. Now, I'll tell you, I am not an expert at bow making. I, I am not a bowyer, so if you're looking for expert advice, I am not your huckleberry. But uh, I do, I have built a bow that is decent enough to shoot. I've been practicing with it every day that I feel confident in, and I'm building another one right now, and I'm building arrows just in, in my off time, in between fishing, and it's just kind of a project that I'm keeping up with. I feel like, uh, I've been doing it enough now that I can uh, show it on video, show you guys my progress. And this is gonna be something that I'm doing uh, all through the fall, really. And it's about to be turkey season where we can get some more turkey feathers. Probably gonna do some hog stocks in the summer to try to get ready for deer season. My whole goal with this is to be able to take a white-tailed deer with a bow and arrow that I have made. So this is something cool that anybody can do really if you've got access to to wood you can even do it with lumber i just happen to live in the woods and i've got tons of trees and i'm not using the best of staves and i'll show you guys that here in a second but let's go get in the in the garage in the cave and i'll show you what i'm working on right now all right we're in the cave and i just want to walk you guys through the evolution of how i got here started uh just getting really curious about the craftsmanship of how these uh, how these Native Americans built these amazing bows, just incredible with the tools that they had. You know, I got a couple books and uh, just started reading about it. And anyway, um, bows and arrows of Native Americans. This is a great book, um, the Bowyer's Bible. This is basically this book into this as well with a bunch of other bowyers. Uh, and that gives you every detail that you want. Um, there's also tons of videos online, but I'll leave uh, this link down below. Uh, if you guys are looking to get into it, I recommend those. Uh, another YouTube channel I would watch is uh, Ryan Gill, um, pr uh, Hunt Primitive, I think it is his channel. He, uh, he explains everything really well. I actually, uh, I talked to him <clears throat> on the phone and gave me some some tips. First bow, if you guys haven't seen this yet, I had a piece of Mexican plum wood that was grown into a cedar tree. I just needed to cut it down. It was it was in the way. So I cut it down. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to make a bow. I've been I've been reading about this. Uh, I, I'm I'm gonna try it. it. Sucks. You know, it's got a propeller twist, it's all bent up, but I had fun doing it. That's the point. And I pulled it back few times put some bank line on it and it uh it cracked i heard it crack i tried to fix it but probably had a 15 pound draw on it. not going to kill anything with that then i had another piece of wood that had been laying out in the yard for probably over a year and i was like i either either need to make this into firewood or something so i was like i'm gonna make a bow out of that it was white ash i say was because it's now broken um and i tried to get cute with it I, I did all the mathematics, lining everything up, and it took me a long time to make it. I even put a recurve in it, um, and it broke. I, you know, it just it wasn't strong enough to hold what I was what I was pulling back. And then uh, there was this old road on the deer lease where we've got a ton of push down cedars. There was a, a dozer that went in there and, and built a road for a, a pipe basically, and pushed down a bunch of oaks and cedars. So I was like, well, I'm going to take some of those cedars and try to do a bow with that. And I did, and that's the one I've been shooting, and it's great. And I showed you guys this in my update video. But since then, I've put a, a recurve on the tips, and I put some bacon grease on it to kind of cure it, sanded it down really fine so it's really smooth. This is a long bow, 
but daggum, it shoots uh, pretty decent. I'm, I'm learning to shoot um, primitively on this bow, and I really like it. It doesn't even have a handle yet. 35 pounds, it, it, it's more than enough to kill a deer at 15 yards. I'm, I'm pretty accurate with it, so we'll, we'll shoot this a little bit um, today, and then hopefully we're going to get this one shooting. So this is what I have been uh, working on recently. And this is essentially still a stave. Um, there was a tree in my parents' yard. They have a bow dart tree or an Osage orange tree. And this is the holy grail of bow woods. Uh, that's that and yew wood, which grows out west. And this one's very, the elasticity, the, the, um, the t uh, toughness, just the strength of this. They make really fast, tough bows. And this is this is ultimately what you want. Um, problem with Osage is there's usually a lot of uh, twists and knots and all sorts of things, and that is exactly what I have. I have a chunky piece of Osage, but it's what I have available to me. It it grows natively in the Red River Valley, so being here in Texas, uh, we've got a lot of it. So ultimately, I'm going to find a really good tree and um, take the time, let it season for a year or so, and then um, make a really, really good bow. But I'm just learning, so <laughs> this is what I got to work with. Um, the tree was, the branch is basically dead, so it's, it's pretty much dried out already. It had uh, carpenter ants all in it. Uh, I killed hundreds of them coming out of the wood. It was terrible. I still have some in the back of this bow. Um, and then when I got it home, I basically split the wood. I split it in half. It was uh, it was about the size of a grapefruit, and uh, then I started just working the bow uh, to try to get it roughing out a bow essentially. Now most people use a draw knife to do that. Um, I don't have a draw knife. I have a machete, uh, which is it's like a, a heavier machete that's essentially a glorified lawnmower blade. Um, I love this little tool, but I can. I can basically use it as a draw knife, I can chop with it, and I can also uh, do, do small little carvings if I need to. So this is what I've been using, it's what I'm comfortable with, but you know, if you're going to do this, I would just recommend getting a draw knife. And what I did was I found a growth ring, and I just started working that down the back of the bow. The back of the bow is what faces away from you, the belly is what faces towards you, faces towards your belly. So I started working that growth ring down, and I think I have it fairly close uh, to being one solid layer of growth on the outside, I think. Like I said, this is my first time doing this. Osage is different in that way, where you are working your growth ring, whereas other woods you don't really have to. But to get the most out of the Osage, that's what you want to do. And essentially it's like you have one layer on the outside. You're not cutting through the layers of wood and making it weaker so when it bends back you might have a, a weak point that can split. Uh, that's the idea of it. So from here all we got to do guys is is just get our center of our bow which is probably going to be right where this knot is unfortunately and we have to tiller it down and tillering just means shaving down the belly of the bow. We're not, we're not going to work on the, the back at all. We're going to shave down the belly of the bow to make it bend. And then we're also going to uh, build an arrow. I'm going to show you guys how to build build an arrow from a shaft, basically. So let's start tillering our Osage down, and let's get it into a shootable bow. So what I'm going to attempt to do here is to make a make a natural little taper. It's kind of going with the grains of the wood. We'll see how that works out. Just got to be really careful around those knot zones. Because those knots are just holding a lot of, there's a lot of fibrous material stuck to it. So if you bust a knot, bust a knot. When you bust, <laughs> I can't even say it. If you, uh, if you pop a knot with your knife or your blade or whatever, you 
do it really hard, it will uh, essentially overrun into the deeper grains of the wood that you don't want to get into. So this is, this is kind of the art of it right here, is working with the wood, watching it, seeing what it wants to do, and just working with it rather than against it and taking your time. But at the end, you've got a weapon that you can go out into the woods and hunt with, but it's also a piece of art. I'm just going to take a few more chunks out of the belly here with the machete. We still got a little bit of room to work, but we're almost to the point where I can't do that anymore because I, like I just hit a knot down here at the end and it chunked it like I was talking about. I said don't do it. Don't uh, don't bust the knot, and I did. Let's see if we have a bend at all. It's, oh, this Osage is so stiff. Uh, just a barely micro bend. We got a lot more work to do. been out here just grinding but I finally got a bow with a little bend in it. Check this out. Very slight but there's a bend. So I'm gonna just clean up the ends a little bit and I'm gonna notch. Um, I'm gonna put some notches in it for putting a string on. And then we will start the tillering process. Okay, you can probably tell about the shavings on the ground that uh, I've been doing a lot of work out here. So I've got a little rope that I'm going to attach string to. Got a string right here. We're notched on both ends now, and uh, now it's just making making the little adjustments. So I've got a little bend. I'm just going to keep looking at that bend. And I'm going to take my uh, my knife and my machete. I'm going to make little adjustments, and this is why I like my machete. I can literally do everything with it, um, but when it comes to making these small adjustments, I can take the flat side and I can press it against the bow and push like this. And I come away with with that right there. So you can't do this with every machete. This is one of my Bark River machetes. It's got a 90 degree spine um, that you can do stuff like this with. That's why I love I love these knives Bark River makes. But I'm just going to continue to do that, make those little shaving adjustments until it's got a good bend. All right, I got it on my little post right here. 
just got a piece of uh, paracord attached to it. It does have a string on it now. I'm just going to pull, kind of look at it. It's still extremely, extremely tight. A little twist in it too. It's not helping things. It's not pretty, but you definitely need to take out more here and then just a lot throughout the whole thing. It's probably like an 80 pound bow right now. <laughs> Won't be pulling that one back. If my name was Turok. Holler at me if you know what Turok is. Okay, we're starting to get some flex now, but there's really um, there's really no flexing in the tips. We need to take a bunch off there, but we're making progress. This boat arc is serious, though. Super, super stiff. If this doesn't break, it's going to be a fast boat. So this is all it is at this point is I'm just looking at the tiller uh, up there and I'm seeing, okay, I need to make some adjustments, you know, here or there, and I'm just taking the knife, just scraping like this. Very similar to what I was doing with uh, the machete. And if you really get going with this, it'll, it'll actually take off a lot of material, but I'm gonna stab myself in the leg there. Probably gonna have to do some uh, do some shaping around that handle, make it fit in my hand better, just feel more natural. And I'm basically just gripping a big knot, which sucks, but uh, yeah, in a matter of half a day, we've gotten it to a uh, to a workable bow. It's not a uh, long-term hunting bow yet, and I don't even know if it's gonna make it past uh, test shooting. But um, man, it feels just really strong and fast. So I'm hoping that it holds up. New day and an almost complete bow. Just gonna hit it with a little sand. It's gonna be time to shoot this thing. Not straight, but golly, this thing is freaking stiff. So much different than the cedar. The cedar that was that's even thicker than this has like twice the amount of bend. What do you think about my bow? Good. Is it good? Yeah. You want to check it out? Yeah. You think you can pull that back? I can hold it. You can definitely hold it. All you got to do is hold this sandpaper and yeah, rub it on the wood. There you go, that's a good technique. That makes it really smooth. You now feel it, feel it right here. See how smooth it is? Yeah. You made it smooth with the sandpaper. Yeah. Cool, well now you can say you hope with daddy's bow. Yeah. You sure did. <laughs> All right, I'll let you go to your doctor appointment. trying to figure her out. I, you know, I don't know if she's going to be out in the woods with me doing all this stuff. I hope she does. But uh, I don't know. I can't figure out if she's going to be a little princess or if she's going to want to be in the woods and uh, clean deer with dad. Yet to be determined. But she does practice her fishing quite a bit. She's got her little pole and she sits out here and practice her cast, so I think she's ready for some spring fishing now that it's warming up. Hey, do you want to get some chickens this week? This weekend? This, this week. like, later this week? Uh, Maybe. Maybe. Sick kids, chickens, <laughs> and then I'll leave and go to a lake, and, you, and you'll be stuck with all of it. We're, we're, it's time to get some new chickens, so. We're, uh, we've been putting it off because 
been so cold, we've had all these cold fronts, but now looks like we're, we're done with it and it's time to get our chickens again or get a new flock of chickens. Okay, let's try this. Hopefully it does not break. Our, I've tried to bend this thing and it's so tight still, but I think it can be strung now. So I'm gonna stick one leg in like this and I'm gonna put one into the bow on my foot down there and then I'm gonna pull with this arm right here. Oh, it must have came off. Just pushing out with my hip. Oh. All right, that's pretty daggum tight right there. Honestly, that string is sitting decently on there. It's definitely cocked to one side. It's pretty ugly. It's gonna want to twist in my hand, but I probably need to do a little bit of uh, tillering the while the string's on here. You can see there's one side that's a little lower than the other. Just by a little bit though. I know the shadows are weird. You probably can't see this, but this side is sitting a little lower, which means this is stiffer. So I'm just gonna take my knife and while the string's on here, I'm just gonna do some scrapings. So when you're when you're making a bow like this, it's out of a natural piece of wood. Usually <laughs> the string is going to want to favor one side or the other, which isn't terrible. Um, on my, one of my first bows, I tried to get it right down in the center, and uh, it actually is it's kind of a problem because the archer's paradox is basically what an arrow is trying to go around your bow. So when you shoot your bow, you've got your arrow knocked right here. It's, it's trying to go around the bow as it shoots. And a lot of arrows do that. They can do that. They flex and then they end up going straight. But if you have it just tilted to one little side, then that'll be the side you want to shoot on. So, you know, most of these bows that you make out of a piece of wood like this, I'm just making them very simple where I can flip them both ways. But this one, I kind of knew it was going to favor um, this left side, the side that I shoot on, because of the giant wonk right there. You see that just turned off this way? And actually this, this little knot right here, which was kind of my only option as a, as a grip, I've, I've got it to where there's, it's like a pretty decent palm swell for gripping. So the string looks like it's going to hit my wrist a hair, but y'all, that's a, that's a bow with a string on it that we can barely pull back. Oh, I guess it's like well over 60 pounds right now. By the way, I appreciate the, the guy, I don't remember your name, but Cripple Creek Knives. The guy sent me that in the, in the mail, the PO box. Been using it on these bows. It's a great little, little scraper knife for doing this, so. Appreciate it. That is looking pretty good. Let's attempt. Let's attempt to even knock an arrow and see what it's like. The uh, This is the wrong size string for this thing. It is extremely tight. Barely pull it back. I heard a slight crack when I did. Um, it really needs more tillering, but uh, let's just see what we're dealing with here, huh? Let's see if it's even possible. Okay, heart shot. I'm scared. I'm scared of this one. I'm scared it's gonna blow up on me or something. It's good. I hit it. Hit the heart though. First shot with the bow. Maybe that's saying something. Oh my gosh! This thing is so tight and strong. So we got a got a long shot there. I pull. I pulled it back though. Like this far guys still needs a ton of uh, a ton of work but the uh, the middle knot not bad as uh, acting as kind of like a palm swell 
the bow naturally wants to rotate um, away from me, which is not good. It's gonna cause some accuracy issues, but the string, the string is sitting really quite well uh, for shooting an arrow. You know, there's there's not a lot of archer's paradox that's going on. Holy crap! If I can get this thing not to break, it's gonna it's gonna be a sixty pound bow. Oh my gosh! This thing's popping. That's basically me just pulling back uh, towards my chest. Let's see if we can shoot a couple more here. As a truck runs off in a ditch. Ooh, baby. Hopping. First group shot with the bow at probably nine yards, but still pretty decent group. Um, arrows look to be flying fairly straight too. These are probably a little too long for that bow. These are 30 inch arrows. That's normally when I shoot on my compound and, the, and this other bow, but I'm not going to push it too much guys. I don't want to break the bow. It still needs some slight tillering, like I said. Um, and I'd, it's going to be probably a chest draw. Let me shoot my other one, my cedar bow, and I'll show you guys the difference in velocity and, and the draw. Here's the cedar bow. Now this one's a little longer. And way easier to string up. So I really don't even need to put my leg into it. I can just pull up on the string, and it's good. It sits way off. Uh, the bow. I, I could actually put a tighter string on this and have it sit off even farther, but I mean just you could tell guys I can go full draw with this thing like no no problem and it's it's probably 35 pounds. But it's a very quiet bow. It's one thing I really like about it. So when I go hunting with this I really don't think that the deer is going to hear that uh, the action of the, the bow at all. A low strung string and this one I can anchor point on my face so it allows me to get get some good accuracy out of it but it is significantly slower so that feels about like that bow was drawing you know from about right here this bow I am full draw off there that last shot there we go and uh, as you guys can probably tell my accuracy has improved a lot had one had one back shot there the bow dark bow the Osage bow might be a little thinner in diameter it has knots or the cedar doesn't but the difference in strength is incredible between those two woods. Uh, I can't stand it. I just need to shoot it one more time. 10 yards, a little different angle. Oh my gosh. It almost just feels like this thing's stuck going, <laughs> going from that other bow. It's so strong. Right the heart. Okay, oh, trying to break the bows. Let's take it down and let's see. Let's see how much string follow it has. Mm, there we go. I see just a tiny bit of string follow right here, and that's okay. It actually had a little bit of deflex in it when uh, when I started roughing out the bow, which is which is great. A little deflex is great. Deflex is when 
it is um, it's bending the opposite way of when it bends during the action. So this needs no recurving whatsoever. This is just, just going to be a, a straight bow. Keep it simple. So I basically showed you guys um, from stave to, to bow. Um, the, you know, there really wasn't much of a process on getting the, the, the log. I chopped it off a tree and then split it in half. Uh, and then just started roughing it out from there. But uh, making an arrow is is important. So I'm going to quickly just show you how I've been making my arrows. And it's nothing fancy. This is a very difficult process. Making a bow is hard, but making an arrow is like twice as hard to get a good one. So here's what I'm going to recommend to everybody that wants to try this. Just buy some shafts because to make this one arrow right here out of a tree limb, uh, you know, this was like a, a limb, I can't remember what kind it was, and to work it down and get all the bends out of it, you know, and, and get the right uh, grain and all that stuff. I mean, it took me like 12 hours. And I made three of these and I shot two of them into the woods. One broke, one I never found. So to work that long on something and then lose it, it just, it sucks. But, uh, you know, when I was first getting started, I really sucked at shooting the arrow. I was trying to figure out even how to shoot. Uh, these are very difficult. And if you want to be very consistent and you're trying to learn how to shoot with a primitive bow like myself, uh, I just went and bought some, some shafts. You know, they cost me about 60 bucks for a dozen. So it's, it's a little pricey, but trust me, they get a lot more expensive than that. Arrows are very, very difficult to make. And if you look at some of the uh, original Native American arrows, they will like, it will blow you away. The craftsmanship um, they had on those. So here's what, here's how I'm making my arrows. I'm, I'm just taking the shaft. These are great. I mean, there, there's, I don't have to work these at all to get them straight. They come straight. Um, I mark them at 30 inches and then I cut them. That's what I shoot mostly to get a full draw. So we'll mark this real quick, cut it down, stick it in the vise, just give it a little saw. Thirty inches. Now, you just need to taper this down. Now I've got a belt sander. If you've got a belt sander, you can do it really quick. I just sit there and rotate it. But if you don't, you just rotate it in your hand and taper it down. And I do this on both ends. I do it very little on the back end where the fleshings are going to be. And this front end right here, I'm trying to get it down to around 8 millimeters, which is what most of your practice tips and obviously your broadheads and everything like that are going to be. Now this is just going to be a practice arrow, but if I at some point want to take this off and make an actual broadhead, what I would do is I would cut, I would put a split in this going down about an inch or so, and then I would stick my, you know, broadhead in there and wrap it, or I could do a glue on broadhead. So you just want to taper that down until it will accept your little practice point or whatever. And when you get pretty close, when you get pretty close, what you're gonna do is heat that up. You're gonna heat it up and that metal's gonna expand and give you just enough to go over where you tapered. So that's getting pretty close, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Then I'm just gonna work the knock in down. So we're not gonna put a knock on this. You know, like your, your typical, we're not putting one of these on here. We're making our own knocks, at least I am. That's, that's how I like to do it. And after shooting enough arrows, I've kind of learned uh, how deep I like the, the knock to be. I mean, Native Americans had all different styles of knocks. Some actually had a uh, protrusion in the back where they could kind of grip it. A lot of Native Americans did like a pull, a pull style, a pinch, pinch and pull. I'm shooting a glove with a three finger grip, so I don't really need that. 
but I don't really need a deep knock either because I'm, I'm holding on to that with my thumb. It's not like a compound where it clicks in, you've got a nice knock and then you can just let go. Um, I'm not really planning on even doing that with mine. I, I'm going to be holding with my thumb and that's just kind of how I've learned. That's how I'm liking to do it. So that's what I'm going with. That's the beauty of all this. You can make it however you want it. So a uh, fletching jig, I would, I would highly recommend if you're going to be, if you're trying to go for accuracy and still do this for fun, you could definitely just slap these on here using your, your eye and try to get the same effect, but it is going to be tough. The fletching jig just allows you to be accurate. So I'm using turkey feathers. It's about to be turkey season, y'all. So if you want to do this, hang on to your turkey feathers. And, and something that's really neat about these is uh, is the way they split. So if, first of all, when you're making an arrow, you're making your fletchings, you want to make sure to use either all winged feathers or all tail feathers, whichever you have on hand. But then if you're using a winged feather, use all left or all right. Something that's really cool is like normally you'd split these with a knife. You just take a sharp knife and run it down this center here. But with a turkey feather, if you find the exact place where it starts, you can start to pull on that. And when you start to pull, you're gonna you're gonna see this thing start to split apart. And it'll start to favor one side so this is going to favor the good side the bigger side which is great that's what I want okay that did not split very well normally it splits very well you have to practice it so the the easy and cheap way that I figured out to uh, to get your feather form is I built a little uh, wooden jig like this. So it's literally just two pieces of wood. So we have a left wing feather on the larger side and if you look towards the back you'll see that it wants to curve to one side and that's that's gonna catch the air and that's gonna push it, push the arrow and make it rotate. These are the fletchings that God made and this is why I like to use them. It's just cool. You know, there's, there's more accurate ways. You can be more consistent with, with other fletchings probably, but these are the ones that the great Lord made and the Native Americans didn't have any problem taking animals with them. Okay, good. Now for the fun part. We take our fletching jig, our shape here. Just want to line those up. And then I'm going to put my little vice grip on it. I want it to be as even as you can. There's probably better ways of doing this, but this is just what I got going on. And this is the fun part. We're just going to take this and we're going to torch it. It smells pretty bad. It smells like burnt hair, as you would expect. And then just take a little scraper tool. Scrape that down. Pop it out. And voila. There we have a fletching. You need to look at the grain of your wood and you need to cut your your knock the, uh, across that grain so not not with it but across the reason is it's a safety thing is if your arrow splits coming off uh, instead of like sharding and going into your hand really uh, gruesomely it will kind of just split up and fly around instead of uh, going directly in your hand, which is bad. No one wants to see that. 
So this is gonna be this is gonna be one of those things that's like impossible to film. There's no way this camera is good enough to actually focus on this thing right here. Gonna focus on my finger? No. There. It wants to see my face. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut across here. Across here. There we go. There we go. That's that's how we did it right there. Two. Well, it's nice to have a little file to do this with, but. Um, Quite honestly, and a little little tip here. If you guys are not, uh, hopefully you guys have a Swiss Army knife laying around. Like hopefully you have one of these. But the saw that is in this is actually really close to the width you need uh, to make your knock. So it's hard to get started. Or just take your time. You don't want to rip the thing apart, but. That little tool right there is, is pretty darn close. You could also do this, you could whittle it out with a knife. And then once you've whittled it out, you just take your sandpaper and you just rub in between there until you get a nice smooth surface. And I just do that continually and then I take a string and I go, okay, that's gonna fit in the knock. That's gonna fit in the knock nicely. <laughs> go. A little sandpaper action. Now this is where the worlds collide right here. This is fishing line, braid, going on a hunting arrow. I don't know what knot this is called, but I've used this a few times in, in bushcraft and stuff like that just making little things wrappings and things it works really well and uh, works good for these arrows but I'm just I'm making a loop and I'm placing it right above this knock right here but then I'm just gonna wrap around that loop 40 pound is is honestly pretty good uh, diameter I found for this. What I eventually want to go to though is just using sinew. Sinew, like backstrap sinew, which all of these years I have just basically thrown into the woods and wasted. And now since I've gotten into bow making, I figured out that wow, that was such a valuable resource. Let's zoom in here. Let's let's go into my face again. Let it slip out of my grasp. I'm gonna stick this tag end through here. Okay, through that loop that I made at the beginning. Yeah. Now I'm going to take a little bit of plier action here. I'm gonna pull, still holding. Now that thread is gonna is gonna want to pull through here. Can you see this? See it pulling, pulling through? Just pull that through until it is about to hit that other side. And then if you do a really good job of this, you honestly don't even need any adhesive. Like it's it's a very strong way to, to wrap that. And, and the reason the reason that you are wrapping it in the first place is because that knock is going to want to split. You've just made a, a split in the end of that, that arrow and uh, it's going to want to split right there. So you wrap it so it doesn't do that. Now, take yourself a real sharp knife and you're just going to cut flush, cut flush right at the edge of your wrappings. Be careful not to cut your wrappings, just cut the tag ends. All right. Now we have, we have a very clean wrapping, but we're not done. We're gonna take a little super glue, or in this case, I'm using some Fletch glue. It can, it can be whatever. Oh yeah, we've, we've gotten crusty. That happens from time to time, doesn't it? 
I have to do the snip. Thin layer of that. Then I'll usually take uh, an extra feather, basically a wasted feather, and just use it as like a brush. Brush that in. And you want this to be very smooth. This is going to go across your knuckle. So remember that when you're making these. This is going to cross my knuckle. How smooth do I want that to feel? I would argue you want it pretty smooth. I've, I have some scabs on my hand. Speed up the process. You could do this in the sun of the wind, but I've got a little heat gun. Just wah bam, hit it with that until it stops getting drippy. If you guys have ever made like lures, you're using epoxy and stuff like that, you know, you got to keep the thing rotating so it doesn't get drippy on you. Same thing right here. Little tip right there, don't come at it super hot because you can actually melt, melt your thread if you do that. So I don't, I don't get it super hot. So that is uh, no longer drippy. It is going to accept the fletching tool now. So there's a notch. All right, so on the fletching jig, you can, you can look at this and you can see what it's gonna do, right? You know what's going on. The knock goes into that little groove right there. See there? Sits in that. And then we're able to put our feather on and then each time we're going to rotate this. So I've got it set for three feathers. So it's 120 degrees. This clamp right here is a right helical clamp. Goes right there with a feather. What does helical mean? Uh, I guess it means the, the, the rotation of the, of the feather. It basically just matches that. So it increases the spin that you're going to get. So it's going to make your arrow spin a little bit quicker. You slap a little glue right here, thin little bead, boom, stick it on there, let it sit for a couple minutes. I hit it with the heat gun, it dries, and then you just rotate it. Go to the next one. Just repeat the process, and then when you're done with that, I'll just take some more braid, and I'll, uh, I'll kind of... Low pro I'll profile the front of these feathers down, just make sure that they're, they're all even, and then uh, just wrap them up, glue them up, hit them with a heat gun, and it is done. So when you look at the back of one of these arrows I've made, you see the, uh, the pretty little helical match with the feathers. So that is, that is the goal. I cannot wait to get in the woods with these bows and arrows and just, you know, practice a little bit. Uh, they make some practice tips, like some blunt tips you can shoot small game with, uh, uh, you know, shoot, I've got tons of hogs. I, I just, I just need to get a little blood on the bows and arrows and, and, and get, uh, get my feet wet essentially. And then just keep practicing and get ready for deer season. But this is definitely something that I'm dedicating a lot of time to. Uh, and I see myself doing it for for many years. And when it comes fall, baby, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be flinging over. Be like Robin Hood out there. I actually watched Robin Hood last night. Just got fired up. You know what? Actually, I have an arrow in here. I have an arrow right here. I was pissed off and happy at the same time when I did it, but I Robin Hooded an arrow. And uh, I had just completed making this daggum thing. And you guys see how much time it takes. Went out there, I shot a three, a three group, a three arrow group, and it was really tight, and I literally shot the end of that arrow. So, anyway, learning every day. Alrighty guys, thank you for tuning in to today's building video. A little something I've been doing, working on. It's gonna be in a lot of videos to, to come during the fall hunting season. You'll see me using these things, so I figured I would go ahead and kinda let you guys in on uh, my, my newest little garage hobby. But uh, next is fishing. I mean, we are in the, the bowels of the spring season. We've just had these, uh, these cold fronts and uh, you know, that, that's, that's spring basically. But uh, it, is, it is time to get the dangle on. The crappie are moving up. 
caught an absolute butt ton of them the other day and uh, you know some big bass as well so stay tuned for all the outdoor action here as always godspeed and god bless you in the great outdoors